birds with us, inshallah. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. I wanted to say that first and foremost, obviously, I'm really proud to be an alum of Yale. I graduated 2013. Uh, I, I started uh, my grad school here 20 years ago. Uh, and it's great to see such enthusiasm. Uh, it's great to see the support that we have for a cause that is so global. I want to share with you a few points that I hope uh, will be a benefit to all of us. Firstly, this conflict that's taking place in the Middle East, the portrayal that is given is that it's super complicated. You're never going to understand it. This is a conflict that is going on for decades, for centuries. And that portrayal is patently false. This conflict is super easy to understand. You don't need a PhD in political science to understand what is going on in the Middle East. On the one side, you have a colonization power. You have an aggressor state. And on the other side, you have refugees, displaced people from their lands. This conflict does not require any background information other than a cursory understanding of what has happened there for the last 75 years. A simple question, where did the people of Gaza come from? Why are they trapped behind 50 foot walls? Their grandfathers were expelled from the land of Palestine. Their grandfathers were forced to leave their houses in the middle of the night. For three generations, over two million people have been displaced from their homes. So this issue is not something that requires a lot of background information. It is extremely easy to understand. And anybody who tries to portray it as super complicated is trying to obfuscate the reality of how simple this conflict is to understand. Secondly, secondly, one of the tactics that is used in order to repel any type of sanity to this very, very uh, clear cut topic is the accusation that criticism of a country is the same as criticism of a faith and nothing could be further from the truth. This is a patent lie and a blatant falsehood. We and all of us, and I am a person of religion, we are not criticizing any faith. But it is possible, and I say as a Muslim, it is possible to criticize the Taliban and you're not criticizing Islam. It is possible to criticize tyrannical regimes in the Middle East and you're not criticizing Islam. So why can't we criticize Israel? And there's no criticism of the faith of Jews. There is no criticism of Judaism. This is a criticism of policies of a state, policies of a nation state, policies of an apartheid regime. So to criticize a country has nothing to do with criticizing the faith of a large group of people. We have no problem with the faith of any person of faith. We do have problem with bombs dropping on innocent civilians. We do have problem with 40,000 people having lost their lives. We do have problem with an apartheid regime that has been active in that system for over 75 years. The third simple request I have for all of us here is to please look up what people that are completely new have said about this. People that are not directly invested. People like Nelson Mandela. If anybody knows what apartheid is, it is Nelson Mandela. Go listen to his interview online about how he defended Palestine, about how he himself said that what is happening there is apartheid. And his grandson recently visited the country. His grandson who grew up under the apartheid regime of South Africa. Do you know what his grandson said? And this is in The Guardian in multiple newspapers. His grandson said, and I quote directly from the article, in some ways what is happening to the Palestinians Palestinians is worse than what happened to us black South Africans. This is the grandson of Nelson Mandela. Our own former president, Jimmy Carter, he wrote an entire book about this issue. And you know the title of the book? The title of the book is Peace, not apartheid. Peace, not apartheid. This is Jimmy Carter. He's an evangelical Christian. He's neither a Muslim nor a Jew. And he has himself documented the realities of what is going on here. Another point I want to share with all of you is that in my humble estimation, I honestly think that that country of Israel, even if they're winning the war, they have lost the entire battle. The morality of what, the immorality of what is going on, the public sentiment and the tide of public opinion, it has clearly shifted. And so in the long run, there is no question. And I say this as a person of faith and also as a student of history, tyranny is never allowed to flourish. Injustice can never continue. And what is happening in that land is the essence of tyranny. What is happening in 
in that land is the height of injustice. And so I firmly believe that it is not possible for such a system to maintain, to be maintained. Now, when I say this immediately, people come and say, oh, are you implying that you're going to be committing a genocide against the other. No, when we call for freedom of one people, we are not calling for the genocide of another. Nobody is saying this. We want freedom for all. We want freedom for everybody. We want equality for all. And the very notion that to criminalize freedom for Palestine, to say that from the, from the river to the sea, we want Palestine to be free, to claim that that inherently is calling for harm against other people is a figment of your imagination. Nobody is calling for harming anybody. That's the whole point. We are seeing a genocide and the fact of the matter, the brutal fact of the matter, and I say this as a proud American born and raised here, our country is great, but certain aspects of it, certain aspects of our foreign policy, frankly, are absolutely pathetic. And I speak to a generation that has seen three wars that have been fought in our lifetimes. Seven trillion dollars have been spent from our taxpayer dollars. For how long are we going to go to war? For how long are we going to bomb? For how long are we going to invade one country after another? Are we not sick of going to war? Are we not tired of funding oppression around the globe? We've already learned after 9-11, we falsely invaded Afghanistan and then Iraq and then other countries. And now we're funding another genocide. For how long are we going to be spending billions of dollars overseas? Our country needs our taxes. Why should we fund the genocide of another regime? Why should we spend $20 billion right now we just approved? And every single year, four or five billion dollars goes to that country. Why don't we have enough to spend over here? We have homeless people. We have a health care crisis. Our education is a shambles. And here we are funding genocides, funding bombs. Every single bomb that drops in that region, every large bomb that is called dumb bombs, that's the way they call them. It's not just dumb bombs or genocidal bombs. Every bomb that is dropped in that region, we are the ones who produce it. We are the ones who sell it. We are the ones who give loans to that country to buy it from us. We are directly aiding and abetting genocide. So enough is enough. And we as American citizens, we have every right to stand up and protest. And if anybody wanted to see the double standards that's taking place across the country now, the way that they're treating student protesters, the way that we're not allowed to use a microphone, we can't even speak on a public speaker, the way that your own protests have forcibly been moved, the way that 50 students were arrested on our campus, and what is happening at Columbia, and what is happening at NYU, and what is happening at UT Austin, and across the entire country, the blatant hypocrisy and double standards. But here's the point, our voices will not be silenced. You cannot silence the voices that are speaking out against oppression, speaking truth to power. You cannot silence the truth. It is impossible to cover up the crimes that are taking place. And we thank God we live at a time where social media is allowing the world to see the double standards. The, I was in Dallas the other day and the news came up in my, in my feed that, oh, um, somebody has been poked in the eye at Yale and a Palestinian protester poked her. I'm like, how can this be happening? That's so cruel, that's so evil. Why why would anybody do that? And then when I saw the video, I could not believe, but of course I can believe, how something as innocent, as an innocent mistake is misinterpreted, made mainstream. But here's the point, every one of us has a role to play. Every one of us has to participate in correcting the narrative and making sure these crass, these crass uh, stereotypes, these crass uh, uh, untruths are not allowed to be perpetuated. We have YouTube, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, Book, take those videos, upload them, and show the world that what certain segments of the media are saying is nothing but a falsehood. We are calling for peace everywhere. There is no violence against anybody. We are not criminalizing or criticizing a faith. We are criticizing a nation state that is founded in oppression. And to claim that a nation state is founded in oppression has nothing to do with the faith of the people of that land. And the fact of the matter is, there are many people who belong to the Jewish faith that are a part of these protests. They're a part of these peaceful movements, and yet even they are accused of being anti-Semitic. How can you accuse somebody of his own faith, but such is the reality that we live in? In the end of the day, oh, uh, fellow, fellow students and fellow citizens and brothers and sisters, in the end of the day, I firmly believe we are witnessing a complete tidal shift, a seismic shift, and we are all a part of it. So I encourage you, do not lose hope, do not falter. You might not see the fruits of this protest today, but 
but I guarantee you we will see it in our lifetimes. We will see a free Palestine in our lifetimes. We will see the freedom of a people that have been oppressed for over three generations. We will see them because tyranny never flourishes. Injustice is never allowed to be rewarded. We are firm believers that history always teaches us the truth. And every one of you right now is on the right side of history. So God bless you and God bless this country to be in correct in its guidance and to be doing the right things. And thank you all very much. And wassalamu alaikum.